Church of Christ of the Colonies. Hate to interrupt conversation, but come on in, grab a seat, open up your heart. We're going to sing and praise God this morning on this beautiful Sunday morning. There is a habitation built by the living God for all of every nation who seek that grand abode. Oh, Zion, Zion, I long thy gates to see. city with foundations firm as the eternal throne nor wars nor desolations shall ever move a stone O Zion Zion I long thy gates to see O Zion Welcome, everyone. Great day at the Church of Christ at the Colonies. I'm certainly glad everyone's here. If you're a visitor, welcome. Feel free to join in in the communion service that we'll be having shortly. And a special Father's Day to everyone, everyone today. Last week, we, uh, for three days, we had a terrific vacation Bible school. And we had about 65 or more kiddos filling our auditorium and our classrooms, and they just had a great time having fun with one another and learning about uh, more about uh, Jesus and, uh, and our Heavenly Father. So it was a great day. Uh, we had so many volunteers, I would be remiss to try to name them all, but an event like that doesn't take place unless you have a whole lot of people that are helping, and uh, we certainly, certainly did. The event culminated with a, a great puppet show and a lot of fun by the kids and a video. We had uh, hamburgers and hot dogs cooked by High Plains Children's Home and we had snow cones. So it was a great learning experience and just a whole lot of fun for those kids. Uh, most everybody is familiar with Snack Pack for Kids. Our church has supported Snack Pack, uh, I guess, ever since its inception. If you're not familiar with a little bit about what Snack Pack does, there are a lot of kiddos in uh, the public schools that are 
insecure, food insecure, I guess is the best way to say it. They may get meals during the week, but they're food insecure on the weekends. And this is even worse during the summer when they're not in school. And so Snack Pack tries to provide meals for these kiddos. When I say meals, it's prepackaged items in a sack that is given to the kids in their backpacks or their, their parents uh, in the summer. More kids are food insecure right now than since COVID. So it's the time that we really need to help step up. And in doing so, uh, there's not a place to distribute this food in the southwest part of town. So they've designated Ridgecrest School. And what we're asking for are volunteers. We only need two or three every Friday, every Friday from 11 to 1 o'clock. Car pulls up, they, you ask them how many sacks they would like, put them in the car, there's no money changing hands, anything. But this is the lifeblood for these kids on the weekend. So if you can help with this effort, then please see me or Jana Duncan. Uh, if you see me, I'll put you in touch with Jana. She's spearheading this and has been a servant in that ministry for, for a long time. Uh, as we know, Rodney Young is leading our singing this morning, does a great job. And Rodney, we thank you so much for that. In just a minute, uh, Chad Horton will be leading our opening prayer. And uh, Stephen Jones will be doing our uh, communion service. Uh, in the bulletin, it shows that uh, Dean Whaley will be preaching this morning as Brett's out of town, but Dean called late Friday after the bulletin was printed and announced that he had COVID. So we've brought another young fellow in, Dick Marcier. Please, en please, please encourage Dick, you know. I'll tell you, well, what can you say about Dick Marcier that hadn't been said, but Dick is going to uh, offer our, our message this morning, so we're grateful to Dick for that. And uh, just a couple other quick announcements. Noah Henderson, right there, raise your hand. Noah was baptized into Christ this past week by Brett, and he's now one of our brothers. So let's give the young man a round of applause. <laughs> Didn't mean to call you out, but you've been called out before, so it's too late. But so congratulations. And just a couple other quick things. Uh, yesterday was Alvin and Mary Sharp's 62nd wedding anniversary. And this past week, yep. And this past week, Dick Linnell uh, celebrated their 60th, 60th wedding. Linnell <laughs> <laughs> said it was 45 of the best years of her life. But congratulations, Dick and, and Linnell and, uh, and Mary and, and Alvin. So thank you. Well, I've seen some people go to links to get out of preaching before, but Dean, he might be topping it all now. <laughs> We're glad you're here, Dick, and glad to be hearing from you today. He leadeth me, O oh, blessed thought, O oh, words with heavenly comfort fraught. Where'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he Sometimes mid scenes of deepest gloom, sometimes where Eden's bowers bloom, by water still till troubled sea, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. 
He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. And when my task on earth is done, when by thy grace the victory's won, in death's cold wave I will not flee, since God through Jordan leadeth me. He leadeth me, he leadeth me, by his own hand he leadeth me. His faithful follower I would be, for by his hand he leadeth me. This world is not my home, I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their song of sweetest praise drifts back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. You know, say something? That'd be. Uh, time approaches when we are to start as a group uh, to partake in communion, the Lord's Supper, and partake of the emblems, the bread and the cup. Um, I will read a few verses from Matthew 14, 22 through 25. And when they were eating, he took the bread, and after a blessing, he took it, gave it to them, and said, take it, this is my body. And when he had taken the cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. 
Truly I say to you, I shall never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it in the kingdom of God. Uh, this, this was Christ's Last Supper, literally, and uh, uh, he, he instituted this himself. And it is in primus, it is the first things, it is why we're here, uh, is to reflect with our open hearts the things that have happened uh, in his walk in this earth for our salvation and all the things that were accomplished at the cross. So uh, with that, I think that, you know, obviously there needs to be a degree of solemnity and uh, some dignity involved in the seriousness of what we do this morning. And everybody's ready? So Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and many blessings. Thank you, Father, for the sacrifice made for our sins. Um, thank you for loving us, for the grace and the mercy for you teaching us, Father, and leaving your word in order to direct us. We know we serve an orderly God, Father, and we, we want to welcome you here to commune with us and us with you. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble go? Why did he choose a lowly birth? Because he loved his Again, Father, we thank you for your sacrifice. Uh, thank you for the salvation that was granted to us, your death, your burial, and your resurrection to glory. We know that that uh, also is, is with us in this building. We thank you uh, for all that. And it, it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Why did he drink the bitter cup of sorrow, pain, and woe? Why on the cross be lifted up? Because he loved me so. He loved me so. He loved me so. He gave his precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for all that you have afforded us. Uh, we know that each and every good th thing we enjoy comes from you. We thank you, Father, for uh, watching over us, recognizing that you are the giver of the keeping, Father, and we uh, rely so much upon you. And these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Till Jesus comes, I'll sing his praise, and then to glory go, and reign with him through endless days, because he loved me so. He
You probably noticed if you're looking at the schedule that uh, communion really is the first thing we come to when we come here today. So we got a little bit ahead of ourselves. Chad, I'm going to have you go ahead and come and lead uh, lead a prayer now, okay? I was traveling not too long ago in the beautiful mountains of Denver, Colorado, and I was set up. I buy and sell antique advertising at a show, and I heard a fellow say, I go to church just to get it out of the way. I've thought about that, and I've reflected on that sometimes since he said that, and I hope that's not why you're here today. I hope you're in the house of God because you're excited and because you want to be here. For me, there is no better place that I want to be than right here, right now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this morning and all of history is about you. Please help us to worship you with an undistracted heart. You know our minds wander to things of stuff we need to get accomplished next week, of present worries and thoughts and of other things. Help us to focus on you and only you and what you're doing at this church right now. Guide our hearts, souls, and minds in strength to lift up your holy name. Be about our singing and our listening to the word in just a few minutes and our interacting with others. And I ask that we have come to this place this morning, not out of obligation or because our dad or mom told us so, but out of pure joy to the creation, to the creator, to the one who formed it all so that we may commune with you. In Jesus' name, I ask all of these things. Amen. Let's do ring the message out. I'm getting hand signals from the back about where we go from here. (laughs) There's a message true and glad for the sinful and the sad. Ring it out, ring it out. It will give them courage new. It will help them to be true. Ring it out. Ring it out. Ring out the word for land and sea. Still far from Jesus, many live in sin. pause for just a second here because it just occurred to me that we are now right before the lesson so let's stand and have the children three years old through the second grade be dismissed to children's worship while we sing the next two verses here tell the world of saving grace make it known in every place ring it out ring it out Help the needy ones to know him from whom all blessings flow. Ring it out, ring it out, ring out the word for land and sea. Still far from Jesus, many live in sin. Sin and doubt to sweep away till shall dawn the better day. Ring it out, ring it out, till the sinful world be one for Jehovah's mighty Son. Ring it out, ring it out, ring out the word for land and 
sea. Still far from Jesus, many live in sin and doubt. Bring out the news that makes men free to all the lost of every nation ring it out. Job. What a wonderful thing it is to be a Christian and know that there are people that love the Lord like you do and can come together on a day like today and worship together. We want to be sure to remember the David Carruth family. Their daughter is in a very serious condition in Fort Worth in the hospital, and we miss them, but we are glad that we're able to be here together. I want to talk to you today about seven wonders of heaven. Now, I hope that encourages you and inspires you. How many are interested in going to heaven? If you would, hold up your hand. Ah, well, I'm talking to the right group then, so I'm glad that, that you were here. There was a teacher teaching kids classes, and he taught them about heaven, and she said, now, if you will, kind of give me some feedback about what do you think heaven is like? And one little boy wrote, it's a place where there's lots of money lying around. You could go out and play with it or buy things with it. I think I'm going to buy a basketball. I'm going to play basketball with my great-grandmother. Another one said, well, heaven is up in the sky, and you could look down on circuses for free if you run down for services free if you ask the Lord for permission to do so. Well, we're not going to be looking for a place to... Uh, do uh, something like a, a, a circus, but something from the Word of God. And if you have your Bible today, I'd like to encourage you to just get it out and follow with me today as we study because of the uh, moving into such a quick place that we didn't get to get it on the overhead or the screen. But if you've got your Bible, we'll follow with us. I think it'll be very good. Did you know that in the Bible, 550 times heaven is mentioned. So evidently it's a very important thing. So as I talk to you today about the seven wonders of heaven, I want you to know that it is something that is very, very important. Well, number one, the first thing I would tell you is that the wonder that such a place even exists is something that is great. Over in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 10, the Bible says, Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundation a city designed and built by God. Can you imagine talking to a person maybe who lived a thousand years ago and you begin to tell them about what life is going to be like, about a brick home and about heating and air conditioning, about TV, about running water and all the things that, that go on that you and I just take, for example, for granted. And you know, a person that you're trying to tell that to would have a hard time of, of grasping what I really heaven was going to be like or what life was going to be like. But you know, that's the way that God made us. Over in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the Bible says that we have an eternal house in heaven not built by human hands. Ah, what a wonderful thing to know that heaven is a place that exists because God made it for us. Well, number two. I think the great wonder I see now is that we're going to be able to live with God. Over in the book of Revelation 21, verse 3, it says, now the, dwelling, now the dwelling of God is with men, and we will live with Him. Can you imagine that we are going to get to live with God? And when we get to heaven, that's exactly where we are going to be. Well, what it is it that keeps us out of heaven? What keeps it would keep us out of heaven is sin. Isaiah 59 2 says, It's your sins that have cut you off from God. But of Jesus Christ, it was said, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. We have forgiveness of sins so we can live with God. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? 
being able to be with the creator of all the universe and be there with him as we celebrate and are in heaven. James Simpson was the man who invented chloroform. And he said that uh, he was able to help more people with pain than anybody who had ever lived. And so one day a reporter caught him and said, Mr. Simpson, will you tell us what is the greatest discovery you have ever made? And of course he was thinking he was gonna say, the greatest discovery I ever made was chloroform and helping people endure surgery. But he said this, the greatest discovery I have ever made is that Jesus Christ is my savior. And how in the world could you ever look anything greater than that, Jesus Christ being your savior? Number three, the third wonder of the world I see are the things that are not there. Now, if you have a Bible, if you'll turn with me to Revelation chapter 21, we find seven things that John says are not going to be in heaven. Number one, he said, there is no temple there. And then he added this, the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb, it's his temple. The reason they don't need a temple is because the temple was a place where sacrifice was made for sin. And there's going to be no sin in heaven. So there's not any need for a temple, and so there is no need for sacrifice. Then he said there's going to be no sun or moon. And the reason is that the glory of God gives its light. Then he says no day with its gates be shut. Now people in Bible times grew up with cities that were walled around and had a big gate. And every night they would shut the gate, make sure that nobody slipped in and did anything they shouldn't be doing. So he says, I want to tell you that in heaven, the gates will never be shut. And then he added in verse 25, he said, and there is no night there. And then he added this, there is no impurities, no people who do things that you are ashamed of will be there. And then no one whose name is in, not in the book will be there. And then there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. And all the things that have given you trouble, all the things that have bothered you, not one of those is going to be there in heaven. Well, number four, I love the uh, wonder of eternity. You know, we are people who are very time conscious. Probably everybody here, or just about everybody here, has a watch because we are taking care of time. Also, there are people who have clocks and calendars, and we see these all the time. But in heaven, ladies, you don't have to worry about your age because we are living in a day where in heaven there's going to be eternal life. You may remember the words of Jesus, John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Some translations say eternal life. And then John, John chapter 3 verse 36, he said, whoever believes in the son has eternal life. You and I are people that when we get to heaven, we're going to be able to enjoy eternal everlasting life because it'll be a day that will never end and what a blessing that will be. Well, number five, number four, uh, number five, if you will, the wonder is that we can live with God. Have you imagined what a blessing that is? Revelation 21, three. Now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. You know what it is that keeps us away from God? It is sin. And that's why in Ephesians 1, verse 7, Paul said, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. And what a great thing it is to know that we have the forgiveness of our sins and are going to be able to live in a perfect place with God where there is no sin. Then also number five, I find interesting the wonder of God's interest of what's going on in heaven. Remember when Jesus told the story of the... Uh, man that had a hundred sheep and one was lost and he went out to look for that one sheep that was lost and the bible says and when it was found there was rejoicing in heaven over one little lamb that was found 
there was God's people rejoicing. And then he told a story about a lady that lost a coin. And when it was found, he said this concerning her, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. I've baptized a lot of people. And I want you to know that the thing that I'm always concerned is, are they going to stay and continue to be a Christian? When I was in high school, my best friend's name was Tom Breeding. And Tom and I were doubles partners on the tennis team. And he came from a different kind of world than I came from because his granddaddy had a big trucking company and his daddy kind of ran it and they were a wealthy family. They had a big house up on Grand Lake and Tom and I would go up there and we would fish and swim and do things in the lake that we uh, really enjoyed doing. But the thing that concerned me most was I taught him and I baptized him. And I was so glad that all the time I was there, he was faithful and served the Lord and was one who was doing what God wants done. But we graduated from high school. I went down to Abilene to school. He went over to Arkansas to work. And I wondered, well, what's going to happen to Tom spiritually? Is he going to be able to continue to, to serve the Lord and to be the kind of man that God wants him to be? When I got home one time from school, I got to run into him and find out that he not only was faithful in church, but he had, got, he had married a girl that he had taught and baptized, and now they were in doing well in the church, and they were finally doing what God wants done. Third John 4, John said, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. And I want to tell you, to hear him know and to know that he was uh, walking in the truth and he had baptized his wife and they were active in the church, it just gave me great joy. And I will know that as the Lord rejoiced in heaven that that was something that he was glad for too. Also, we find that the Lord is going to be doing something that's very special. And if you have a Bible, I'd like for you to open it to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4 is a wonderful story about John. The Bible says that one day he saw a door open in heaven and there was a voice that came out of heaven that said, come on up and look around. Can you imagine that invitation to go into heaven, look around? So John took off and he went into the heaven and when he was there, he saw some things that really were a blessing. He saw there were 24 elders and the elders laid their crown before the throne where God was. And as he did, he heard him as they were singing, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive power and honor and glory. For you created all things, and by your will they were created, and they have their being. How would you like to have been able to go where John went? Go into heaven and, and see God himself and be before him and worship and honor him because he is our God. Well, let me tell you that there is one more thing that I want to tell you about God that is important and it's about heaven. And that is, if you have your Bible over in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And in this chapter, we find something that... Uh, is uh, very unusual and something that you do not know very much about. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Did you realize that there is a third heaven as well? Well, what in the world is this third heaven like? Well, the first heaven is what you and I know of as our atmosphere where the birds are. The second heaven is where we find the uh, great things of the universe, the stars, the moon, the sun, the sky, are all there in the second heaven. And the third heaven is where God dwells. And it is a place where you and I want to go because that's where God is and we want to be in the third heaven. Jesus had his disciples and he sent them out one day on a mission. They came back and they were he pumped up and excited because they found that they had been able to be successful in carrying them the message about Jesus. We find, though, that Jesus, when he saw them and their excitement about 
the work that they had done, he said to them this, he said, fellows, do not rejoice that you're able to accomplish these things. But what you ought to do is rejoicing because your names are written in heaven. That's Luke chapter 10, verse 20. And you and I need to realize that that's the greatest thing there is. And that is that we can be people who are going to be able to rejoice because our name is written in heaven. And I wonder, is your name there? If you have given your heart over to Jesus, confessed your faith in him and been baptized, then you know that your name is written in heaven. And because your name is written in heaven, it means that when you leave this earth, that the place that you're going to go is to be with God who loves you and whom you love. It was Jesus, our Savior, who said that he is going to prepare a place for us. And if he was going to prepare a place for it, he would come again so that we could be where he is. If you're not in one, if you're not already one whose name is written in heaven, you need it to be there. You need your name to be there so that you can go home tonight and be assured and safe and happy because your name is written in heaven and you belong to God and you're going to one day be able to be with him. Let's pray. Dear Father, we're so thankful to you for the great gift you have given us of Jesus. And Father, we're thankful for the great hope we have to be able to live someday with you in heaven. And we just pray, dear Father, that we're going to be able to be your servants and live the kind of life you want us to live so that we're going to be able to be with you forever and forever. Dear God, we know that we will be with you with everlasting life, and for that we are so thankful to you. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. We're going to sing a little song, and it's kind of the song of invitation. And maybe you have been thinking about, you know, I'd like to be sure that I'm going to heaven. And if you confess your faith in Jesus and are baptized and live for him, then you can be sure that that's exactly what will happen. If you'd like to come forward in any way today, why don't you come right now as we stand and sing our song together. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? I think Gene's got some closing announcements and a prayer for us, but I just want to say what I bet a lot of people are thinking which is it's great to have a pinch hitter like Dick who's ready to go on a moment's notice, who can build on a lifetime of messages and ministry and still be able to bring it like that. So thank you very much, Dick, for that lesson today.
Dick's a member of our X Tig X six group, and we ask him every now and then, "Are you ready?" And Dick says, "If that's what you want, here we go." <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's always ready to go. Um, I want you to to uh, recognize in your bulletin there is today um, is the day we're supposed to turn in those little baby bottles for uh, the hope. Um, uh, yeah, hope of choice. Would, uh, if you are like uh, many of us, my wife asked me this morning, she said, did you remember it? And I said, I didn't know I was supposed to. <laughs> well, she, she said, well, at least I remembered. And I said, well, I'm glad you did. And so that's a situation we need to, if you haven't uh, brought those little baby bottles back, uh, remember to bring them back next Sunday. Today was the deadline, but uh, we could, we'll extend it for you. And we also want you to remember to uh, the Caruth family and their daughter, uh, Melanie, who is now in hospice. Melanie's been struggling with this cancer for four years, and it looks like it's taken control here. And so we want to remember Melanie uh, Bartlett and, uh, and the Caruth, and we want to remember Cindy uh, in her surgery coming up uh, tomorrow, or I believe it is. And so, let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, merciful God, we humbly bow before you, recognizing you as Lord of Lords, King of Kings, the Almighty God, the one who gives and the one who takes away. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you especially will be with the, uh, with the Caruth family and, and their daughter, Melanie, as she's been struggling with this for quite a long while, and the rest is coming her way. So we thank you, Heavenly Father, ask that you would give the family comfort and peace, and we pray that you be with Cindy as she's be having heart surgery tomorrow. So we ask all these things, Father, in your Son's holy name, Jesus Christ, amen.